Welcome to Room Service. I'm Sarah Richardson. Are you craving a five-star kitchen on a cafe budget? We're going to prove it can be done through some smart design choices. Look how beautiful. And yes, it comes complete with luxurious marble. We visit an artist whose miniatures speak a thousand words and devise a way to get your message across with left bank flair. It's a black and white bistro on a budget and it's only on room service. I know you know that this is the before shot of the kitchen, but I have to tell you right off the top that I had absolutely, positively nothing to do with the paint color. You can call it split pea soup, you can call it algae green, or you can just call it not exactly a flattering color for an early morning wake up. Anyway, the paint color's been here for a couple of years, and now there is a real motivation to move forward and spiff this kitchen up. Here's my idea about how to make a cosmetic overhaul of a pretty good kitchen that's starting to look a little down on its luck. Step one, decide whether the cabinets are in good shape and whether they're actually worthy of just being fixed up or whether they're falling apart. In this case, we have really sturdy hinges. We have everything is sitting pretty level, except for the countertops, which were obviously a home-built project. And I think what's happened here is that the plywood or whatever's supporting them has started to bow. The most important thing is that the cabinets are all in great condition, which means that we can do something pretty substantial in terms of fixing this up. We can take all the door fronts off and we can send them out to have them sprayed. This usually costs somewhere in the range of $20 to $40 per door front, which is an absolute fraction of the cost that it would cost you to get new cabinets. So something you might want to keep in mind. Next step, if we take out the counters, it means we'll also be replacing the backsplash. And here we could go for something a little bit more fashion forward. So we could either bring in a hit of natural stone, which would pick up on the slate floors that are already here. And if you have a kitchen that already has slate floors or stone floors or some sort of ceramic tile that is installed, you're probably gonna wanna keep it and try and work around it as best as possible because that is a big ticket item. So our two big ticket items, cabinetry and floors are here and they're fine. Everything else is up for change. The big change that I wanna make in here is I'd like to see a peninsula in this area right here. So the cook can stand and look out into the little terraced garden and maybe it could even have a little arm that comes off the side that would offer more storage. Overall, we have a space that is 10 feet by 15 feet and I think if we make the most of it, it can be big on gourmet style and cutting edge features and we'll be able to say goodbye to glorious green. Instead of overpowering, we're opting for a lighter touch with elements that sparkle and shine. We'll tone back the color quotient in favor of classic, casual, and chic black and white. Just the right mix creates modern style and opens up the possibilities for accents of exotic color. When you stick to the basics, the result is a space that celebrates the pure goodness of garden delights. Have you ever wondered what the key to a successful cosmetic fix-up of a kitchen is? Well, in my view, it's keeping your eye on the bottom line. And by that, I mean stretching the budget just as far as you possibly can and doing as much as you can for as little as possible. Now, in the kitchen I'm working on, the tiled countertops are sagging, they're broken, they're cracked, they are not looking too good. So we need to install new countertops. But countertops can be pricey. And one of the challenges is that if you're thinking about installing stone, marble, or granite countertops, you may find that the price ends up sort of outweighing the advantage of keeping the existing cabinetry. What I mean by that is that if you're gonna spend a few thousand dollars on 
new countertops, you may end up looking at your cabinetry and thinking it's really not worth it. So here's a solution that I have come up with. One of the great things about design is that many, many people are using large scale tiles in natural stone. I'm talking about 12 by 24, maybe 16 by 24, or even giant 24 by 24 inch slabs. They're generally being used in wide open spaces like kitchens, like entry halls, and even in bathrooms. So the terrific thing is that there is a huge selection whether it's a travertine or a limestone or a marble there are so many different stones that you can choose from here is a Carrera marble tile this is honed it's only 3 8 thick but look what I can do at the edge there's either a bullnose or an OG and I can turn it into a custom countertop profile that will make it look every bit as beautiful as if I had custom counters done. There are also some slabs that are as thick as three quarters of an inch, which is the standard thickness of a normal slab countertop. So here's a way to make it all work to get the look of custom counters for a fraction of the price and make your cosmetic fix-up fabulous. Next on Room Service, our lipstick and rouge job is coming along just fine. And seeing the wonderful world in miniature. Well, I guess it's safe to say that there are no gourmet meals being prepared in this kitchen right now. But the upside of that is that we are making some good progress. Number one, you will notice, you can't not notice, the green is gone. And I couldn't be happier about it. Look at the smile on my face. It is so much bigger feeling in here, so much brighter. And I have to say, it feels a whole lot more relaxing and conducive to making gourmet meals. So what have we got? We've got new appliances. We have a slide-in gas range. The terrific thing about using a slide-in range is that it doesn't have a backsplash on it. So it's a really clean look. All the controls are down here at the front. This is just going to look incredible. We have replaced that old almond fridge with a beautiful new stainless fridge, complete with a light in the ice and water dispenser. Sorry, sometimes it's the little things that are exciting. We have a fan vent hood that we are gonna put in here, which is gonna require a little bit of a shuffling of these upper cabinets. Then, where are my tiles? I have a tile here. Oh, here are the tiles that I bought. And you can see they are the perfect depth. They are gonna look superb on this counter. We're also gonna run them as the backsplash. We've removed all the old tile. We've put up green board, so new tiles ready to be installed. I found these amazing. Uh, these are reproduction cast iron brackets. Doesn't that look sort of like a French bistro to you? We're gonna put them all across this wall here, and we're gonna put one long shelf so that we can display beautiful plates and bowls and jugs and that sort of thing. I've got a new kitchen faucet. What a beautiful gooseneck. We've got a new sink that's going in here. All of our door fronts are out being sprayed, and this kitchen is, it's, it's a disaster now, let's face it, but it is gonna look fantastic. Do you believe in strong contrast? Well, I do for this kitchen. I've decided to go with a two-tone color scheme, and it's all about black and cream. We're gonna do the upper cabinets in cream. Museum white, the same color that's used on the walls, so they just disappear and it feels open. The lower cabinets, are you ready for it? They're going to be black, solid black, all the way along the bottom, and they're gonna bring out all of the sort of texture and veining that's in our marble. The lower cabinets on the new section will also be done in cream, so you have a nice sight line when you walk in, and this two-tone color scheme will be a study in contrast and bring out all the best black and cream. 
Sometimes the most ordinary things can be pure inspiration. If the sign of a true artist is to find beauty in the most everyday objects, then Sibel Young is a master. Her great talent is to represent humble objects through exquisite, tiny, whimsical paper sculptures. My fascination with miniatures started uh, when I was young. I just always loved making things in three-dimensional and always very small, and I can't explain it beyond that. I love the borrowers, the book The Borrowers, where all the little people made things with buttons and needles and thread. All my inspiration comes from the neighborhood, walking around, just daily life, daily routine. So I, I carry uh, scratch pads with me everywhere I go. Sibel's stories come to life in a modest home studio. My work environment feels very adequate to me. Some people think it's very small, some people think it's very big. <laughs> I love having a room to myself to uh, fool around in. Sibel combines a traditional copper plate etching process with twisting and folding fine papers into intricate sculptures to create the finished product. I make a range of objects. Sometimes they're compiled in large pieces and sometimes I like to pair objects together that will offer different meaning for everybody else, but I like to juxtapose two objects together. So I'm working on this one piece with a stepladder and a balloon and I loved the idea of the stepladder almost being able to get you to reach the balloon that's flying away. Sibel's work has developed a dedicated following of collectors who are tuned in to the same everyday objects she finds so inspiring. I always get so nervous before the opening, so I get very preoccupied about that. I feel a little uncomfortable having everybody here to see my work and to see me, so once I get past that and I see that everybody's having a good time, um, that's probably my favorite part. I think my fascination with miniatures is that you can put them in a briefcase and go. And, and I find that fascinating because you can share them with anybody. Next on Room Service, the writing's on the wall with our Bistro Blackboard. of a sort of casual French bistro into your kitchen while well, I've got just the thing for you. You need a wall-mounted blackboard. And thanks to the fact that you can now buy blackboard paint at the hardware store, you can easily make it at home. So here's the idea. I'm starting out with a door casing. It's pine and it's sold in eight foot lengths. So what I'm doing is to create the backdrop for the blackboard I am using a sheet of two by four foot Russian birch plywood and this is the type of thing you can purchase at your home outfitter at a lumber yard. Let me show you what it looks like. It has a smooth face on both sides. Now in order to mount the frame onto the wood. What I'm going to do is I am going to measure in three quarters of an inch all the way around the perimeter of the board. Now, you can start to measure up for the cuts of your trim. Now you'll want to have a miter saw in order to make these cuts and if you don't have a miter saw I suggest you enlist the help of a friend who has one. In this way you could each make one. So my first measurement is 22 and a half inches across the top on the inside of my guideline and 46 and a half high. Now what I want to do is just mark that out on my trim. Okay, let's see how I did on my first couple of cuts. Yep, that looks great. Let's work on assembling the frame. So when working with a corner joint like this, we want to put a bead of wood glue, carpenter's glue, along there. Make sure it's well covered. And then 
bring our two corners together. The glue will be the main force that holds this frame together, but it's a good idea to add a small finishing nail into the corner, drive it in. I'd suggest driving it in from the top and it'll catch the other piece of frame and hold it together while the glue is driving, drying and keep it from warping. Whew, these nails and glue have a lot of work to do. Then we can move on creating the other side of the frame. You don't want to watch me do all that, so let me show you what happens next. I'll set this one aside to dry. I'll be right back. Now is the moment of truth where I see whether the frame that I've created fits the backboard that I have. So I'm going to line this up to those guidelines, and you will notice, I'm quite proud of myself, look at this. It's meeting up perfectly. Before I attach the backboard to the frame, I am going to apply my blackboard paint. Now, as for the frame, you can choose to either stain this, paint this, or urethane it any color you like. I think I will probably paint it in a cream that will work with the walls and some of the other um, accents in the room. Now, when it comes to the blackboard paint, it is an oil-based paint. So let me warn you, it's a little bit stinky. You want to use a low pile, oh, I'm stuck here, a low pile roller because you want it to have a smooth finish when all is said and done. Okay, then you can simply roll it on. If you're putting this on to just plain wood, new wood, you may notice that the first coat will soak in a fair bit. I'd advise doing a few coats to build up the texture. Woo, this stinks. And use it in a well-ventilated area. Would you look at that? The paint is dry, and I'm just going to give you a little preview. You're not going to see the final until it's in the kitchen, installed, and ready to go. But here's an idea. So here's the frame. Set that on top. I will simply put a few screws, a couple along each side, through the back, hold it in place, and then as a final touch, what I did was I took a piece of chalk and I've tied it to a string. I've put a loop at the top. I can put a screw through the side of the frame and that way you'll never lose your chalk. You'll be able to keep track of everything, whether it's drawings, phone messages, or shopping lists. It'll all be organized and it'll have the appeal of a French bistro at the same time. Ornately painted pottery with romantic motifs was very fashionable in the 1700s, but it was also very expensive until a couple of enterprising potters developed transferware to offer pretty china for all. The technique has hardly changed. A pattern is etched onto copper and then inked onto tissue. After, it's laid onto the piece and fired again. Red, blue, black, and brown have always been popular, but if you've got yellow, you've struck gold because it's the most rare. Next on Room Service, get ready for the wow factor as we show you our kitchen update. When it comes to styles of culinary fare, French Bistro has been a perennial favorite and it's appreciated for its classic tastes and its more budget appeal. So when it came to getting rid of acid green in favor of a more classic enduring palette, obviously I looked to be inspired by French Bistro. We were also looking to do things on a budget, making use of whatever we could, keeping the floor and cabinets, and creating a complete overhaul, basically just with paint. One major addition you will notice is 
the island. And this was simple and inexpensive. What I did was I ordered two cabinets in the same style as the rest of the kitchen. These just came from a big box store with a quick delivery program of about two weeks. Then what I did was I built a frame around them so that they could sit in the middle of the room. It's done with a shaker panel on the side and on the back, which mimics the door style. Then I decided to attach the island to the wall with two floating shelves, very simple, made just out of pine with a one and a half inch nosing. And now they offer extra storage space. The countertop is a maple butcher block, and this was something that I got from an industrial supply company. It comes in a standard size of 36 by 6 feet, and the great thing is that when we cut it down, it gave us enough leftover that we made some cutting boards, and we also have enough of an overhang. So our base cabinets are 24 inches deep. We've got a 12 inch overhang, and that's enough room to put in two stools. The stools are covered in a cream and black ticking to pick up on the color scheme that wraps throughout this kitchen, and they have bases made of cold rolled steel. So that's a sort of more modern touch that references all the appliances. You'll notice above the island is one long floating shelf. It is eight feet long and it's supported on four reproduction iron brackets. Then you'll notice this whole wall. And you've got to think back. Think cracking tile, green walls, and maple cabinetry. Now we have a two-tone combination. Cream on the uppers and then on the lower section we've gone with black and we're talking jet black all on the bottom cabinets and it gives it a bit of weight and I love the effect. For pulls, we went with chrome on the lower and then we used a little sort of egg-shaped knob on the top. You'll notice that we had to reconfigure our cabinets a little bit here. There used to be a little over-the-range vent hood, which never really works, and I far prefer the look of a chef's freestanding range hood like this one, stainless steel with some lights in it, because after all, if you're gonna cook like a pro, you might as well tie it all in together. I'm sure you've noticed the countertops and these are the Carrera marble tiles that I bought when I was out shopping with a bullnose detail all the way across the front. We wrapped them up to create a backsplash as well, running them in a sort of brick pattern using a half tile at the top and it just creates a continuous line and a continuous flow and creates a feeling that is open, airy and inspired by all things good classic, French, and bistro. I'm Sarah Richardson, and I hope you'll join me next time on Room Service.